Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a cocktail. Hello and welcome to Behind the Bar with me, Cara Devine. Thanks to you guys, the aviation is sitting pretty high up on our list of requested cocktails. So we figured it was time to tackle this classic and answer the age old question. Do blue drinks actually taste better? Okay, I said blue and it's sort of a bluey purple, but you know what I mean. You see, the thing is, the aviation cocktail was not always its distinctive violet hue. It's often dubbed a forgotten classic, but the aviation was included in Harry Craddock's Savoy cocktail book, which was still glanced at occasionally, even in the deepest dark days of bartending. The version included there is a simple combination of gin, lemon and maraschino liqueur. It wasn't until the cocktail renaissance started happening in the 90s when bartenders were eagerly poring over every single cocktail recipe ever committed to paper that someone stumbled upon an earlier version of the drink in Hugo Enslin's 1916 book Recipes for Mixed Drinks, which also included a couple of dashes of creme de violette. Creme de Violette is a very floral, purple-hued liqueur which, as the name suggests, gets its flavour and colour from violet flowers. Honestly, it's a little odd and tricky to use, as anyone like me who grew up eating Parma violets can probably imagine. I'm still not even entirely sure if I actually like them or not. And so it was never very widely distributed, which is probably why Craddock didn't bother including it in his recipe. The maraschino provides plenty of floral notes in itself. But there's nothing bartenders love more than hunting down or recreating an elusive ingredient and so Enslin's Aviation became the new cool kid on the block for a while. It also gave the name a bit of context when you saw the bluey purple tint looking very reminiscent of the evening sky. Because of Creme de Violette's overpoweringly floral notes though, the drink can easily come out a little bit soapy and both the Violette and the Maraschino are actually quite drying despite being liqueurs. So combined with dry gin and lemon juice, it can actually make it a very hard cocktail to balance. A lot of people now argue that the violette less version is the way to go. So let's settle it once and for all. Usually I'm all for having the supporting ingredients highlight the notes in the spirit, but actually I don't love using a really floral gin in this one because it's just a bit too much altogether. So I go for a really classic London dry, whatever solid one you have to hand. My house pours tankery, but something like Beef Eater or Plymouth would also work. Or if you are using something on the more crafty side of things, then air to the more savoury and vegetal. Maraschino is a clear cherry liqueur made from Marasca cherries. Don't worry, we're not using the radioactive juice that comes with maraschino cherries. It's actually a fairly dry liqueur and there's almost some bitter notes from the cherry pits. It's a bit of a secret weapon because of this, because that cherry flavour goes well with a lot of spirits, a little goes a long way to round out a cocktail, and it's not so sweet that it will kind of unbalance a drink that you want to be on the drier side. Luxardo is the go-to here, but if you don't have that, then just make sure you're using a high quality one which doesn't taste synthetic. The liqueur which really kick-started aviation fever in the States was Rothman and Winter, because a clever importer saw that forgotten classics were being rebooted and there would be a demand for those kind of products like creme de violette, which had fallen out of fashion and were no longer brought in. The Bitter Truth also make one, as do Massonet's, uh, Tempest Fugit. Again, just use something good quality because even though you're only using a small amount, you'll really detect it if it's artificial tasting. Now, I'm gonna get a little controversial here. Although neither of the original recipes contain any, I actually think that both versions benefit from just a little sugar. I'm literally talking like five mils. It just rounds out the drink and brings all the flavors together. Without it, you have dry gin, sour lemon, and liqueurs, which while they have some sweetness, also have a fairly dry finish, and floral notes, which can tip into almost a kind of soapy bitterness. So all of this to me can lead to a fairly thin and unbalanced cocktail without just a little splash of sugar to help it all along. Before we get to making and comparing our aviation variations, it's time to thank all of the Patreon patrons who have joined us in the last couple of months. Especially Tim, Joey, Adam, Doug, Don, Manuel, Stephen, Michelle and Holly. Your support means so much. If you want to help keep this channel going or want bonus content, then head over to patreon.com forward slash with Cara Divine, or just click the link in the description for all of the details. You know the history, you know what's in them. Let's get to making and see how they taste. 
First up, my take on Harry Craddock's aviation. The recipe in the Savoy cocktail book is one third lemon juice, two thirds gin, and just two dashes of maraschino. I keep my proportions pretty similar, letting the gin do the heavy lifting with the maraschino just as an accent. And as I said, a little dash of sugar just to balance it all out. These are not really classic sour proportions because maraschino isn't sweet enough to balance out a full shot of lemon juice, but it's also too powerful a flavor to use heaps of. I rarely use more than 10 to 15 mils at a time. So first off, we're gonna squeeze some lemon juice. The garnish for this is usually a cherry. As I said, if you don't have a cherry, a lemon twist is absolutely a nice option as well. Especially because I'm not using, you know, a full shot of lemon juice in there. Uh, it's actually kind of nice having those little lemon oils just to lift it all up too. I know that some people, you know, if you are using a full shot, it does get quite tart and you probably don't need extra sort of citrus in there. Because of my proportions and because I don't really like waste, I am just going to cut a little coin off and do a twist and discard over the top of the drink and then just keep the cherry as the garnish. So we'll just start with a little 10 mils of our maraschino liqueur. Such a fragrant liqueur, like you can smell the maraschino kind of wafting up already. And then 50 mils of gin. Five mils of sugar syrup. My bar spoon happens to be five mils. A lot of them are, but obviously just double check and that just makes it nice and easy to measure those smaller amounts. And then 20 mils of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Now I'm gonna fill my shaker tin full with ice. Pop your tins together. Make sure it's nice and straight and then shake as hard as you can. Once your tins are frosty, just pop them open. Grab your glass from the fridge or freezer, and then you can just use your Hawthorne strainer to hold the ice back in the tin and pour through the fine strainer. Now, these cherries we were gifted by um, a very kind fan, so thank you for that, Ricardo. Uh, what I have done is just rinse them, so took them out of the um, syrup and actually popped them on a julep strainer or you could do it through a fine strainer and just give them um, a little wash under the tap because you don't actually really want, um, you know, unlike in kind of, I guess, boozier sort of, uh, you know, something like a Manhattan or whatever, you actually don't mind having a little bit of that cherry juice. This is so bright and fresh and zesty. Um, you don't really want any of the syrup to kind of ruin your last mouthful. So pop that on here and straighten. I say that, it's sticking. And then final little touch, which is obviously, you know, completely optional, um, is just to do a light spritz over the top just to kind of lift it all up even more. Um, I would do it from quite far away and not bother rimming the glass or anything. You don't want the lemon to be overpowering, but it's always nice to have a little aroma kind of as you're bringing the, um, bringing the drink up to your face. And there we have my version of Harry Craddock's aviation cocktail. Next, let's take a look at Hugo Enslin's version. The 1916 recipe is the exact same as Craddock's, but with an additional two dashes of creme de violette, which does tend to suggest that the later recipe was based on this one rather than it just being a coincidental name, which does sometimes happen in the cocktail annals. I don't do equal parts, just half the amount of creme de violette to maraschino, but some people really love the flavor, so feel free to go equal parts if that's you. It also means that my drink is more of a kind of gray, purple, blue tinted rather than full on brightly colored, but I'm happy to go subtle on this one for the flavor. So we're gonna start with 10 mils of our maraschino, 50 mils of London dry gin, 20 mils of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And then five mils each of the violet and the sugar syrup. My bar spoon is five mils, so that's a pretty handy little measure. 
So as I said, the sugar in here is really more like, you know, when you use a little bit of salt in cooking, you don't want it to actually taste salty. This much doesn't make it actually sweet. Um, it just kind of balances everything and makes sure that, you know, it's just the, the actual flavor that you're looking for. Because if you tried to up either the maraschino or the violet to get that little bit more sweetness, um, it just, it would be kind of too much of either of those flavors because they're both quite powerful. Um, so yeah, as I said, probably opening myself up to a bit of controversy here, but um, I reckon that it definitely does the job. Then we're gonna fill our shaker tin up with ice, pop the tins together, get them nicely lined up and shake as hard as you can. Got a nice lofty coop here to go with the name and just use your Hawthorne strainer to hold the ice back and pour through the fine strainer. Now, as I said, the lemon twist is absolutely optional. Kind of lighten and brighten everything. And then I've just rinsed off this cherry. A, a nice fresh zingy one from start to finish and that can just pop in. And there we have my version of Harry Enslin's Blue Aviation. So now you know how to make both versions of the aviation, I suppose it's time to compare them. Hmm, I feel like, I guess I was gonna start with Craddock's, but I guess this is the earlier one, so I should probably do that first. It's such an interesting flavor. You know, there's a lot of kind of gin and citrus drinks around, um, but that you kind of always know that you're drinking in aviation. And I think that's a bit of an a, appeal of it. It's quite a unique flavor. It obviously really kind of floral and those, yeah, kind of Parma violet notes, but not overpowering. It's really delicate, um, which makes it quite Moorish as well, because you're not, yeah, you're almost going back like, what is that, you know, uh, which is quite cool. And again, the maraschino doesn't come through as like a, you know, a kind of sweet cherry flavor. It's just this little kind of interesting, quite uh, dry, but like dry, but fruity kind of back note to it, which does just make it a really nicely balanced cocktail. Obviously I know that I like this, but I, I do just think that the, that little bit of sugar just gives it a bit more kind of body and weight um, and stops it being too uh, just kind of sour and citrusy. Um, so I think that's actually a really nice balance. And then for the later version, I mean, it's still a really pretty color, even if it's not blue, it's that kind of, it's almost a, it's how the, the skies look in Scotland a lot of the time, actually, a sort of grayish, <laughs> uh, grayish color that you're just not sure what's gonna happen. And that's also a great drink. Um, Again, just the maraschino gives a little bit more interest compared to, you know, your more kind of just classic citrusy gin drinks. As much as it's fresh, it's got, it's quite kind of perfumed and has those nice fruity and sort of um, almost a little bit herbaceous, which I'm not sure if that's just, you know, the gin and the maraschino kind of playing together because there's obviously not anything particularly herbal in there. Um, but yeah, also quite a, an intriguing drink. But I do have to say, I, I think, the blue wins in terms of just having that little je ne sais quoi. It's just really different from anything else that you've ever tried before and it looks really cool. So there we go. In my opinion, blue drinks do taste better. <laughs>